<laughs> All right. I don't need my glasses. I was wondering why you had them on. I was like, oh. I had them on so that I could see the the focus on the cameras because it's so it's such a small screen. How far to the left can I move this chair? Not far. Are you getting hot? <laughs> my legs burning up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not far because it's at like the edge of the table. That's toasty. Well, you can't say you're cold. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely not cold anymore. No. One less thing to pitch about. My nose is still runny, but. The know. middle camera. Middle, middle camera. camera. Okay. All right, this is name pending. This is name pending. I'm Mike Culberson. And I'm Keeper. And we have two guests here. You know, Kel. Kel's been with us a couple times now. A couple times. And then Zach, another good friend of ours. So. And then, of course, Cabo and Pearl are around here somewhere. There's Pearl back there. So we got a couple topics, maybe touching some of those iffy ones that everybody's so scared to talk about. But yeah. Of course, we got to start with our book reading. Ah, book recommendations. So I'm actually, oddly enough, I was cycling back to a book series that I read a while ago. Um, and it was one of those ones where it just, like, was floating around the back of my head. Like, this was years ago that I read it, right? And it was floating around the back of my head, and I was like, I can't remember what the name of the series was, but I kind of wanted to read it again. So you're just Google searching. So I, yeah, I'm like looking <laughs> up stuff, and, and I eventually, um, I eventually found it. Pulled up the thing. Um, so it's the Honor Harrington book series. Uh, the first book is on Basilisk Station. Basilisk. 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 Um, by date. David Weber. Uh, David Weber puts out a lot of sci-fi. So this is... That was a pearl. That was a pearl. Cabo <laughs> behind. Um, so this is, again, a sci-fi series. This is far-flung future, right? Really? Like, so this is about a... a, um, a space um, country. A country in space, right? That takes up multiple systems. Yeah. Um, not... The solar system, right? It mentions Terra, but it's like we're so far from it. And they said, they haven't said exactly how far into the future, but they said 500 years since the colonization of this planet. So pretty far in the future, right? Because, okay, we've achieved spaceflight, we've colonized a planet, and then it's 500 years after that. So this is, again, military sci-fi, right? We're talking, you know... Um, space opera kind of stuff yeah. and it starts off and we're following a commander as she gets um she gets her new command a frigate um she kind of gets boned by like politics and the admiralty people wanting to do differences and uh like wep how we're going to do tactics and weaponization yeah um that makes sense. Of, like star trek you're talking about stargate and the different alliances that were yeah. there how yeah. they operate in space, the Tok'ra. Yeah. So they they do a they do a practice live fire session right for the fleet, mm -hmm. and her ship obviously does bad because the weapons and tactics that they were trying to get her to use just don't work. Don't they don't make work. sense. So she essentially became the fall guy for their poor setup, and she got sent to a shit station. Shit assignment. Yeah, and it's her dealing with. Being at that, like, getting shit on multiple times. And this it, is the first book. And this is the first book. So you hear about her whole life and everything, the assignment that she dealt yeah, with. Yeah, she is... She didn't drink She's alcohol. She's in her 40s, right? So she's been in... She's been in for a hot minute. Hot minute, right? Like, so she is... Although, you know, there's, she like... Maybe has, like, ten more years that she's going for a career. Well... Well, for a career... This is far, fu this is far future, so is they have anti-aging now. So although she looks... Like, she's in her 40s. She looks like she's in her 20s. Like cryogenics type? No, like anti-aging so that you age slower. Maybe like nanites? Nanites should probably be more of a better understanding. They don't, go, they don't go too deep into what the technology is. It's just like hand-waved magic technology word. They don't dig into that. They're digging a lot. It's not about this. It's about... They whatever. dig into the weapon systems. They dig into like traveling through space. They dig into their, their version of the space marines. Stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. The military side of it, not so much the the civilian side of it. Yeah, the civilian technical side of it. Yeah. Just, okay. So, I've been... I've been Your books are in this series. Um, I can actually find out right now. Because it actually sounds pretty interesting. Fifteen books? Fifteen books, and it's something Weber. 
David Weber. David Weber. So I've been I've been reading that one, and I've been listening to you to because you know I do. Uh, typically, I'm doing an audio book whenever I'm also reading something. Yeah. Um, but I've been listening to another old book that I read back in the day, and I really liked, and it was one of those ones that floated around in my head, and I, I was like, I just need to pick this back up and reread it again, because I really liked it. And this one is called um, uh, Rogues of the Republic, Book One, The Palace Job, um, by Patrick Weeks. Okay. And I know I've read Patrick Weeks before. The author sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this one is Definitely. essentially an eclectic group trying to do a, a heist job in a fantasy world, right? It's payday. <laughs> it, they're, do, they're doing a heist job on a floating city, right? Okay. Um, and so you have a, a shape-changing unicorn, a death priestess, a... A uh, magician who got kicked out of university. And the book dives into what each one of these things are? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you have uh, two uh, Empire Scouts who had been, you know, claimed as deserters. The good old boys. Yeah. And, um, you know, and one of them is actually the the protagonist, the one whose view you see most of the time. Um, and she's, you know, she was a captain. She kind of got done dirty with the desertion charge, That's right? The one that didn't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Two decent series. There's a couple books on that one, too? There are three books. Three books, and then it's a finished series. Okay. Like, it, it completely comes to the... Oh, yeah, and there's a uh, oddly strong farm boy who has a strange history. And like, he, he was... He, no, he was he was dumb he was dumped on he was dumped on the farm. He had like a sword and like a ring with him. Come he's got Superman. he's got a weird tattoo on his arm. <laughs> he, it's kind of delving into that that trope. Text me that series. That one actually sounds really good. <coughs> I thought you said the other one sounded good. You didn't want me to text you that. I looked that one up. <laughs> I'm not gonna multiple tap this. <laughs> At least if I open my phone now. So I'm know. ADHD to the extreme. ADHD to the extreme. <laughs> so this is this is once again my my reading. And it's only been a week, but it's already changed, <laughs> right? But that's that's book talk, and we like that because you read so much. Is Zach reading anything? Uh, I might reread the Night Angel series. It's by Brett Weeks. It's I've like read a, that. Yeah, you talked. About yeah, that. I talked about that. I love that book. I was series. I was pretty much a fan. Did you did you read his other one? Uh, the Lightbringer. Yeah. I have I have all the books. I'm just like on the third one right now. I think kind of it kind of gets hit slow parts. Yeah, you know. But I will say that I've read the entire series and it's very fulfilling the way everything comes together. Did Is you see that he released the fourth Night Angel book? N yes, I did. But like, I felt such closure on the last book. I was like, I don't really. I'm not going to reattack this. I don't want to attack it yet because I felt like we had closed out that story. Yeah, it, I mean, it kind of takes place in, like, the future of it. Yeah. It's pretty good. I think I'm, like, halfway through it. Okay. What's it about? Well, so, go like, ahead. There's, there's a kid who grows up in, like, the slums of the city, and it's, like, kind of, like, medieval-ish time frames where, like, and, like, magic and stuff exists. And uh, the kid gets apprenticed to what they call a wet boy, which is a magical assassin. So he kind of, it just kind of goes through, like, the apprenticeship. The first book goes through the apprenticeship, and then, like, uh, another country invades the city that they're in, and they have to kill a whole bunch of people. Pretty good, though. And there's, like, some magical artifacts that take place, too, that provide, like, extra powers. Nice. Uh, but... I'm not going to go too far into that because it's kind of a key a, a book thing series, in the book. A book series, they just, they're just they revamping and they're going to do a series of it. It's Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Yeah, yes, they're going I to do the a... the first two episodes. They're pretty good. good. I keep hearing that it's really, really good. In well, the how did you see the first two episodes? Because they're, on, they're Disney. on Disney+. Plus. They're on Disney+. Plus. But the fact that they're doing a series, everybody's like, it's not a movie, it's a series so they can mm -hmm. touch on more. Which, oh. to me... It's like, I love the book series because my little brother was reading it and it was something we could connect with Yeah. I left to the military. And 
I loved the book series. That was one I hardcover fucking read this. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't... I, like, kind of read a couple books in that series, but I was already a little too old to really enjoy it. You know I what I mean? I agree on that. It was definitely more towards the younger yeah. generation. Yeah. But well, that's like Hardy Boys. It's like a... Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it was, was... Oh, teenage, fuck. I forgot about the Hardy Boys. I used to read to those. college, you yep. know? It was, but it's something to connect with my younger brother, so I did it, and... I mean, he worked for you for a little bit, Justice. Yep. And it was just... It was something to connect with. Mm-hmm. And... Love it. Love they're coming out with the series. I haven't seen the two episodes. I want to. They're I just, good. I haven't. But the fact they're doing a series is going to be great, in my yeah. opinion. Because I'm they can seeing. touch on more. What was that one series? Books. Should of... it be made into movies anymore? They should just all be made into TV series? I, I agree. That being said, they did do a good job on Ready Player One. Yes. Have you read the book? Yes. And I still say, yeah, they they shifted away from what the book was doing a lot, but I still watched that movie and very much enjoyed it. Yeah, it's it's a really good movie. It just doesn't follow. It doesn't follow it completely. I would agree. The on that. books, we, we really much it. at all. I think one or two podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ready Player One was great. My sister was reading it. Me and her both finished it, and then she goes to the second book, and she was just like, "This sucks." Like, I didn't mind the second book all that much. I didn't either, but coming from the first book going to the second book, it was a huge difference. And yeah. You could see the writing. It seemed like he was just like trying to come to a close. Yeah. And it was just very abrupt. But I, I felt like you didn't need a second book. Yeah. Not really. Like, I felt like there was a very good closure on that first one. But that being said, he had tried to come up with another book... I forgot what it was called, but it was like Invasion or something like that. Yeah. And it kind of sucked. Like, the, the writing wasn't great. So, we talked about books for a little bit. <coughs> we can talk about books forever. but let's. Whoa, I am completely fine to talk about books forever. But let's get to one of the contentious topics. So it's been, what, about a year since Roe vs. Wade was overturned? Oh, yeah. It's been about a year, and maybe a year? Less maybe. Than a year? Within that time frame, it's been a little bit decent bit so Roe versus Wade got overturned the whole pregnancy stuff abortion all that talking about the lady in North Texas that can't get an abortion even though it's gonna kill her if she doesn't yes yeah that's exactly what I'm talking about this is where do you stand like because the big topics that come up is like oh uh, what was it are you for or against and that's always what it comes down to, and you lose friends over this. Like nine I'm, times out of ten, it's like, are you pro-life or pro-choice? I am, I am, fairly pro-life with stipulations. However, I am also pro the government staying the fuck out of the decision. Yeah, I'm. I'm on that one hundred percent on that one. I, so then that get, that makes you pro-choice, nope. allowing the person to have the choice, right? This is why it's a great topic. This is why it's a great topic. So, So I am am pro-life. If you have every possibility to make the life come to, then you should. Now, I'm also a believer in if you're going to have kids, you should be able to support them. Absolutely. So, if that's my mindset, pro-life, yes, life should come. Okay. Because we shouldn't have all these adopted kids needed to be adopted. We shouldn't. If you can't have the kid and there's a medical whatever... I get it. The woman in North Texas that, well, it's either you or the kid, and one of you's got to die. That's an extenuating circumstance. But we we can't play this pro-life and pro-choice because if I get in a wreck and I kill the woman, it's double homicide. But well, that's you know that's the same thing about divorce. If you if you get divorced, you pay child support. She gets custody. You don't get a choice. It is, and that's these are super contentious topics because so if you want to get into contention then let's get contentious let's go I mean, me <laughs> why have talked why about can the government why can the government come in and can, and tell us men what we are going to do and then not tell the women what they are going to do or not do because there's not really equality exactly I mean, and the court systems are set up to favor the women yeah, in every and damn near every state, especially on the East Coast states, when they're actually commonwealths, not states, right? Like the Commonwealth of Virginia. If it's the flag in itself 
in the center of the Virginia flag is a woman, right? So you know it's a woman by a state, right? Yeah. Same thing with South Carolina, North Carolina, New York. All all women. Well, and this is where we get into centered. it's mostly blue states. It's mostly left leaning states that do this. And it's like, okay, well, does left leaning care really more about the people? Like, is not it really. more about not really choice? But this is this is what population believes. It's an illusion well, let's, of choice. let's be honest here. Our politicians don't care about people. Correct. When you're a career no. politician, we in. in Maybe, maybe at the lower levels. Maybe your mayors care. Town, probably not. So you know, that, well, I'm talking about on. like town, local Look, town. I can see local it. town. Yeah, maybe, on. maybe not city. Working, working right? with several nonprofits over the last six months, eight months. Um, actually, this entire year, working with at least two different nonprofits, volunteering and doing things, and and really getting to understand things, and seeing your city officials come out, like your uh, commissioners or your, uh, depending on where you're at in, in the United States, they're, they're called different things. Um, your commissioners, your, oh, your eldermen, your eldermen. Yeah. You have, you have county commissioners, like even Bear County has a county commissioner. Um, you have your county commissioners, you have your city councilmen, or in other parts of the states, they call them eldermen. Um, and, and, and they are the ones that, that are your, your first go-to, right? Those are the ones that s somewhat care. I know, Zach, you had something to say about most, most cities are leaning blue. And we are talking about um, divorce and how most guys are screwed over when it comes to divorce, especially with yeah. children and the way life has been. So, so there is there's very much a bias. Yeah. It's, the, it's funny because if you look at studies... It shows that people raised by fathers have a, like... Single fathers. Like, single fathers have a much higher rate of being, like, successful and, like, stable. And people raised by single mothers have a lot more, a lot higher chance of being, like... But by that, by that same token, people raised that. with both... Have the highest chance of... Have the highest chance of success. Yes. Well, let, let's break this down. So... The podcast already knows you were adopted. Yeah. So I was also adopted. And Zach was adopted. So two of us were adopted. Purchased. Three, purchased, yes. <laughs> Are you and... Is your mom and dad still together? Uh, no. Okay. Who... My mom still and my together? stepdad. You have a mom and a stepdad. Yep. So you, have, you're, you come from a broken family. Yep. And I was in the foster care system where I was abused and beaten weekly. Yeah, I would I was, love to have I a was, breakdown on that foster care system in the United I was, States. I was abused and bruised every every week. Like, every time my mom picked me up, I was bruised head to toe. Uh, my mom took an, a year and a half to actually get me back out of that system. So, I mean, do you think that affected your upbringing? Do you think it affected your political views? Do you think it affected how you see things? Like, uh, maybe to some degree. But I don't really, I don't really think about that time in my life because it was so early on. Although it was in my formidable years, it, it does, it does change how I feel about my kids, though. Like, I can respect that. I understand. You know that. what I mean? Like, I will, I will tolerate more BS. And on a regular basis, uh, for the sake of my kids and you not have being split up. Childhood in your hands. Yeah. Uh, without you know, but at the same time, like we talked about last week, if you're if you're being abused and abused and abused by your spouse, there's a point. There's a point where you need to actually end that because your kids are learning that it's okay to be treated that way. And, and this. And this is very. This is why it's very important that you know you be mindful as adults, even if y'all are in the middle of it, even if y'all are fighting over it or something. You be mindful of what you're representing yep. to those kids, because they'll remember. Because Absolutely. my parents made a point of never arguing in front of me, like blatantly, really heated arguments. They might might get into it a bit. You might see some contention, 
But when they really needed to have a no shit fucking sit down, it wasn't with them or wasn't with you around. Yeah. And my parents were the same way. I want to I want to touch I mean, on a little bit of yours. I mean, so mine's a little bit different because my dad worked on the freighters up in the Great Lakes, so he was only home for maybe three four months a year. Before divorce or after divorce? Uh, they, I mean, they're still together. They okay. never got divorced or anything. No, well, okay, you were adopted. So we're yeah. Talking about. So I mean, I was adopted at birth. Okay. So I, I have a like birth adopted the same day. Like went home to like my parents' house. And those are the only parents you ever yeah. knew. So. So like. He was working on the freighter. Yeah, he was working on the freighters for until I was in sixth grade, seventh grade. And then something changed, or? Uh, he retired. So he retired and it was just a stay-at-home yeah. dad. Uh, I mean, he still did like drove semi for like some of the local businesses and woodworking and stuff like that. But he was always around. Actually, he was always he was home. eighth grade. Yeah, he was always home then. But for most of my life, he was only home for like three, four months a year. Ah, so you got that like military kid mindset without that's, your parent being in the military. Yeah, that's, kinda. That's where my dad was. Like, they got married, high school sweethearts. Older sister was born out of wedlock. I was born ninety three, and but my dad was always gone. My birthday was gone. I think for about eight years, my dad was always gone. Just like, it's a single mother, pretty much. Like I, I grew up with my mother raising me because my dad was making ends meet, and that's just yeah. where we were going with things. But I don't know. Well, you you I, again contention in a way of all oh, mad at my mom for my dad being gone. Yeah. Well, nobody ever really, ever really talks mad. about about it. You know, that's the that's the sad truth of reality is, and 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 in the fact of how nobody ever talks about how that has affected people's lives. Like, you know, I, I was fortunate, although my stepdad was home most of the time. Like, he worked 8 to 4, right? But once he got home, he, he buried himself in a magazine, like Macworld or something like that, or was surfing the internet for other BS. And I'm like... To him, it's not BS, but to me, it was because I wanted his attention. I wanted him to play football with me in the front yard or, or throw a catch, right? Do shit with me, but didn't, right? So he, even though he was there, he was absent, right? And, it, and it, I think that probably messed me up more. And not being able to have a relationship with my biological father, even though I wanted it, uh... Like, all of that kind of messed me up to a degree until I was able to figure out, oh, this is why I'm so messed up, and then deal with it, right? But nobody talks about how single, like, being in the military, where, like, one spouse is in the military, and how the other spouse has to be a single parent most of the year, how that affects kids. So... I, I agree. I um, I cannot empathize. I sympathize, but I can't empathize because I had my father still in my life, and he made it a point to be in my life, even though him and my mom had separated. And then my stepdad treated me, like and treats me still, like his own son. Now, that being said, he went to work all day. He came back home. He was tired. He sat down. He watched football. But he still, every now and then, tried to go out of his way to spend time with me. He made the, hey, come spend time with me. We're going to do this together. We would play video games. We would go do dumb shit. That's the way my dad was. My dad came back from deployment. We'd play co-op on whatever game at the time. And that's what we'd do. And that was him venting and me spending quality time together. So I do think that helps with a lot of what's going on. Mm -hmm. But we don't have that anymore. A lot of times people come home and just, really. yeah, it's, it's the end of the day. I don't I, care about my family. I am providing for them. That's it. We're going to have a short break, redo some things, chill out, and then we'll jump back on in a little bit. There it goes. Now it's going. Uh, shit. So they're apparently going to rework uh, Harry Potter. Yeah. I heard about Oh, that. yeah, I heard yeah. about that. Redoing... So, I don't think I could imagine 
I don't think I could ever imagine anyone but Daniel Radcliffe as as Harry Potter. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah, we talked about this like, a there's, little bit last week. There's like, like that problem, I but I think about. making it into like a TV series and them exactly. actually like sticking to it. It goes back to what you so said earlier. I agree with that. That no book should be a movie anymore. Yeah. Even if we're doing multiple movies, it yeah. should always be a TV series. That being said, I never want them to recreate the Lord of the Rings movies because they did them perfect. Extended. If you watch the other ones, fuck you. Extended is the only way yeah. to go. They did them perfect. Yes. Right? It would be like them remaking the Star Wars movies, right? It doesn't ever need to happen. Yeah. Uh, the the OG trilogy. Four, but five, the Harry six, po- yes. the Harry Potter movies. The original one, two, one, and three. One, two, and three need to be redone. The Harry Potter movies are... They're good movies. There's ups and downs. But on as far as like book accuracy goes... Yeah. And they did the Ron Dirty. We've talked about this <laughs> before. The yeah. they, they did, did Ron Dirty. Ron Dirty. Hermione got all of Ron's lines. Yeah. Ginny... We talked about doing? this, yes. Ginny Weasley was got fucked <sighs> over. Yeah. Uh, Neville got fucked over. Neville did Dobby give, got fucked yes. over. Even though I hate Dobby. Luna Lovegood actually got fucked over too. Luna, Luna really recording? did get fucked over, even though, yeah. again, I liked all the actors and like actresses for yes. all of these. For all these characters, I loved them. Yes, they were great. Perfect. But they actor. fucking yeah. wrote it so bad. That Goblet of Fire, which, by the way, I have a side story for Goblet of Fire, which I'm going to have to tell y'all. But, um,. Goblet of Fire, when Dumbledore comes going in there going, Harry, what have you done? Yeah. And it's like, that's that's not how that was written at all. At all. The way to Dumbledore out, has, a couple paragraphs. gets angry zero times in the entire book series. He gets annoyed, but he doesn't get angry. Yeah, yeah. he is super chill. Super He's chill. He's your super grandpa. calm and collected all the time, thinking like six moves ahead. Mm-hmm. I hope with this new Harry Potter rendition, they jump into more Harry Potter games. So I do. Yeah. I do have a Harry Potter aside story. So when I was in the military, I went up one. Back in my day. Back in my day. Back one summer, my parents and 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 me used to go to visit our my grandparents up in Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, Ooh. once a year. Because that's where my mom's parents were, right? Ain't nothing in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ain't <laughs> nothing. It's a great retirement community. If you've been there, ain't nothing. So, I'm in the military, and it's like, hey, you know, your gra- your grandparents aren't getting younger. You should come out to go. So, we go. And while we're up there, I mean, old people are going to do old people things, right? You're kind of just going along yeah. with the motions. And there ain't shit to do in Lincoln anyways, right? So we had gone by this taco place and we'd gotten a whole bunch of tacos and we had all these extra tacos left over. And my grandfather, for some reason, had just turned Harry Potter on. Like, I like Harry Potter. Okay, you have my attention. But, like, he turned Harry Potter on and it was a Harry Potter marathon. But when I say marathon, I'm not talking the right kind of marathon. I'm talking where it's the same movie. All day. So Harry Potter won over and over and over. Four. The fourth movie, which in my opinion is the worst movie. That one was? Uh, Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. Yeah. Um, And it's like realistically my grandfather, Papa, he would not have cared if we changed the channel. However, me and my dad being the way we were raised and the men we are, we're not going to fucking change the channel. Put it on this. It lives on this. It, this is this is our life. It's like when a kid drops something and you no longer pick it up. It's dead. It lives there. It so live on this channel. So we're just kind of sitting there, just sucking up life. And my and my grandfather and my mom are out on the porch having their time. And it's my granny's off doing granny things. I have no idea. She's making cookies with all her cookie gang. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, but it's me and my dad. We're just sitting there. We're watching this movie again because we've been watching it all day. Um, if I could do it, like, I kind what's, of... What's better than watching it once? Watching it four times. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes to the fridge to do that thing where you're, like, bored and you're just going to shovel food in just yep. because. And so we have those leftover tacos. And he goes... <laughs> 
hey, do you want a taco? I was like, do we have any crunchy ones? And he's like, just soft tacos. Yeah. And they were bad tacos. And so I just remember the sadness of just biting into this cold, soft taco. And me and him, like, at the exact same time, we're like, ah. Oh. <sighs> nope. That, that totally reminds me. So for Ruth's birthday, family came in. We're at their air. We're at their Airbnb, and my dad and my uncle are like, "Oh, let's go pick up tacos." Taco Cabana sounds good. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. What do you? No. We got a great place here in Bernie. We Taco can pick crap up great on you. Fucking tacos. I could literally drive down some shady ass street <laughs> and find better tacos. So go the hole in the wall places are the exactly. best. Exactly. We went to this place in Bernie. I was like, look, you're going to spend less. You're going to have great fucking tacos. We go here. We spent maybe 40 bucks versus like the 80 bucks they were going to spend on all these fucking breakfast tacos. And everybody's just like, my parents are like, Yep, this is the nail in the coffin. We're moving to Texas. My uncle was like, I guess we need to come up and visit you more often because these tacos are great. <laughs> it's a lot better than Taco Cabana. Dude, they man. Have Taco Cabana in Tennessee? I don't know. Taco Cabana is not my number one taco place it's, in Texas. It's actually Taco Crap on you. <clears throat> but we were talking about Harry Potter. We, we, were, we were talking about Harry Potter. I hope they redo the Harry Potter video games because they... Could have a lot of potential. Well, they did that one. But yeah, that the last Harry Potter game they came out with was really good. That was so good. But they missed like all of them in between. Yeah, they didn't do all of them. I I liked the fact that the the Harry Potter game had nothing to do with the books and had yeah. nothing except lore wise yeah. because that's realistically no, what I legacy, wanted. Not legacy. Yeah, legacy yeah. was great. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about. Because they had going along. I, with the I actually, I actually don't want those. No, but they already made them. If they yeah. remade them and actually did them properly and actually followed through with the engines we have now, I think they could. Go. I need you to stop speaking this shit into existence, all right? Because I don't want it. I think they could go great, but this is really just segueing me into Space Engineers. Love this fucking game. I love this game, and Zax has been trying to get me on this game for a minute now. Really, really cool fucking game. Like, Zach can totally talk more on this. Zach. So, like, the game is, it's not realistic. But physics-wise, it's semi-realistic. So, like, when you're building your spaceship and shit, you actually have to, like, put enough thrust to get the bitch off the ground. And if you put too much thrust, you're going to have a bad time. And flying is, like, the biggest pain in the ass ever. So it's like Kerbal. I don't. I've never Less played like it. Kerbal. It's more realistic than Kerbal Space Program. You, you ever played Kerbal Space Program? No. They came out with the second one. It apparently wasn't good. Nope. It sucked. Yeah. So the theory behind Kerbal Space Program is you you're the civilization of Kerbals, and it's kind of like when America was going into space. You're building the space program, and it kind of looks like NASA in some ways, like like the. It looks like Pensacola. Yeah, and um, but you are literally building it from the ground up. So you're doing like your first like explorations around the 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 planet, and the funny thing about it though is like a lot of the physics are very very practical. Yes. Like very yeah. realistic. Their mathematics yeah, that's... in it are a hundred percent accurate. That's how like space engineers is too. Yes. They're like, their physics system's great. Their thrust system's also really good too. <laughs> I love how Pearl's just been like next to you this whole time. Like, well, she feels the warmth. She's been moving forward and back. Like you can have like ionic thrusters and hydrogen thrusters and like atmospheric thrusters. So like jet but, thrusters. But it's also a survival game. Yeah, where you have to mine certain things. You have to mine everything and. If you have you to find expand your base. You yeah. have to get certain things. And then late game, you have to find like uranium and asteroids and stuff like that. And I always start out like, on Mars. It's kind of like the gravity's not as bad. An adult version of Minecraft. Absolutely. Yes, it is the survival type game. And right now, me and Mike are stuck on Lord of the Rings: Return to Moria because Lord of the Rings. Well, start and then it being in Moria. Is even better. And yeah. Then you're a dwarf. 
Yeah. And each seed is different. Each gameplay oh. is a hundred percent different. Um, but I did want to segue this into another game because I'm going old school. Because I started re Sonic. Fuck you. you say Sonic. Fuck you. Sonic is no. <laughs> It's not my fault that Sonic's fantastic, okay? Sonic is fantastic. Even and Tesla the comeback has, of Sonic has so been Tesla fantastic. Tesla even has, yes. like, for their new lock notification, the Sonic collecting rings. So. Um, but segue into... I went back to Dragon Age Origins. Oh, wow. And Yes, yes. Oh, so nice. we're, we're going back. We're going back a ways. Age me a little bit. Let's I was, go. I was playing RuneScape the other day, so... Oh, man. <laughs> Old school RuneScape or R3. Like, like, no. Like, first New gen RuneScape? RuneScape? I mean, I still play that it's every once in a great while. Yeah, okay. It's called old school RuneScape, the pre 2007. Yeah. yeah. Where you just click and you're miserable. <laughs> just like, I'm hey. gonna click once every like two I minutes for like I, four or five hours. Bots. It's not my f fault that I had figured out how to use auto hotkey, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I wrote a Python script to do like, Mining and shit for me. Good man. Screeps. That's Screeps is like the new. Everybody's learning coding. Screeps. Screeps. Never heard of it. S e r e e p s. Huh. Learn to code. There's mods where you can put different type of code in there. I think it starts with Java. I think mean, it starts with Java, and then you can throw mods in there to change it to Python or C plus plus or Linux. <coughs> so how does it teach you to code? <coughs> Because essentially you are this. It's not supposed to go down that one. You are this <coughs> robot. Can, um, oh. you know, you okay? Starcraft, I'm, right? I'm gonna be fine. So Starcraft essentially yeah. is what this game is, but it's 2D, and you're out. So you got to tell each one of these mine resource things. I almost died, and you just completely blew past yeah, that. I totally blew past. Well, it fuck you. You I thought we die. were friends. We were, and I was watching if you. We both. we were <laughs> we were friends. We, we were friends. You just died really yeah, quick. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, fuck Yeah, good. Yeah, no, I, I wish for your death on a daily basis. The show must because continue. Because I get pearl. You don't get shit. <laughs> Allie and Steven are taking them. All right, you're going to separate my dogs. Fuck you. You'll be dead. You won't know. <laughs> all right, I just want to tell you, you're you're a broke bitch. I want to see that fight between you and Steven. I just don't care to fight anymore. <laughs> I'm just saying I've seen Steven go drunk in Royal Rumble On someone before, okay? It's a blast I'm just saying, you're over there coughing You didn't spit up or cough Past your throw up Then I was like, oh, he's good, he's not dead There's no blood There's no blood, he's good But no, Screeps is pretty much It teaches you the base game Alright, you already job. said this, yeah And the whole point is To get you to get from point A to point B, mine resources, go through certain paths, and eventually, after like a so many hour time period, it opens you up to the world where everyone else is playing. So your world is like a 64 by 64 bit, and theirs is the same. Well, now you can get into other people's worlds, attack, and it's all just little dots that are doing these things. But it, yeah. it teaches you all, all the basic commands of how to get from point A to point B, move different folders or different locations so it it teaches you basic basic linux stuff what you were teaching me when i was working with you before you got into a motorcycle accident and forgot everything yep before i forgot everything so that's essentially what screeps is it minecraft or <clears throat> minecraft the same like you can go into the back end and create code to do things i mean you can do that for a lot of games yeah. you can do that for quite a few games especially a lot of the older shit yeah, like modding games is a huge thing for a lot of games. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of PC games like Skyrim yeah. and like unless you're modding, you're not playing right. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The game RimWorld. Yeah. I have Rim gone. World. I have modded that game so much that I no I longer know what normal. vanilla I looks like. I vanilla. don't because there's so many quality of life, and I think yeah. I've got over a hundred mods. I have Easy. auto sort on there. That was one of the first ones I threw on there, so I didn't have to sort through all my shit. Even for like space engineers, there's a lot of quality of yep. life, like the nanite builders. Oh, most most games I play or the blueprint on PC, I can't. Lord of the Rings Moria is the only game that I haven't modded yet. What was it? Me and my friend found out that um, Risk of Rain Two uh, had all these mods for it, yep. and it completely changed our lives. And like, then they're like, hey, Keeper, hop on this game. I'm like, fuck yeah! It's like, by the way, download all these mods. 
I've never played the vanilla game of this. Never. <laughs> He's ne yeah, no, he never experienced the vanilla game. But we played vanilla on that game for a ridiculously long time before we realized, and we knew that they kind of supported mods even. They did, yep. Um, well, more games are leaning towards that because when you mod certain things, it opens it up to the creators of it to expand it more. Like Space Engineers was another one. Yeah. They're like, I think they pushed out, this was a year or so ago, they're like, please mod our game. Because it helps us throw more ideas out there. Yeah. I mean, even like, freaking RuneScape, <laughs> like the Alt-1 toolkit and stuff, yep. they implemented some of that sh shit in the game because it was too widely used where they're like, okay, let's just figure out a way to put this shit in. Because, obviously, everybody wants it. Yeah, if everybody's doing the same thing. Like, I was telling Mike on Lord of the Rings Moria, I was like, there's a sort button. There's an auto deposit button. Like, we're talking about just ease of life. Yeah, I mean, how long and grounded did it take for them to get a sort button? Oh, man. Oh, Ruth was born, and it was still pre-release. And it finally released, we played through, but there was no there was no auto sort, there was no, no... No, Ruth was being born, and we were playing this game. Oh, damn straight, my kid's being born, I'm playing grounded. My wife was like, oh, you should bring your PS5. It was like, eh, I could bring a laptop, have more games. Yeah. So, <laughs> this is going to age me, but, uh... Let's go, because most of us are... Okay, this is totally going to fuck up audio. The original Nintendo. Louder, I can't hear it. The original Nintendo. SNES or NES? The original Nintendo. Okay, would you say Nintendo? Are you talking about name brand Nintendo? The or you... original Nintendo system. You know, with the door in the front, you had to blow into the yes. cartridge. So you're yeah. talking about the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo. Not Super Nintendo. No, he's talking about that. NES. Okay, okay. Well, NES. I, I don't know what it was called. It's the first one that ever came out. Nintendo Entertainment Center. That's what yeah. NES stands for, Keeper. Okay. I need you to get on the same page well, as us. I'm just saying, for my Sega Genesis, I still had to blow into the fucking bullshit. Okay, let's talk <laughs> about that for a second. Let's talk about the game that you had to play before you could play the game. As you're sitting there... <sighs> Hold on, put it on the phone book. It has to be the white pages, it can't be the yellow pages. <laughs> I'm just saying, the only game I still have on my Sega Genesis is, guess what, Mike? Sonic. Yeah, well, I mean... Yeah. I mean, that was their game. Yeah, That was, you're right. And now you can cross-platform that game on damn near every console. But, what, what... I mean, you, you had mods even back then. Like... But you did it on the controller, up, down, up, yeah. down, right, left, A, B. You had cheat codes. Cheat codes. You cheat codes. codes. Yeah. Back were put in by the developers. Yeah. So why the can't they do the same thing today? They do. Why can't they, they put they all do. the mods and stuff into the well, game okay. and allow you because to do the cheat codes so that so, you can... So do you, you know what mods are, right? I assume they're cheats. No. 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 Not necessarily. So mods, especially when we're talking about, like... It's like love letters to the game for other players. A, a player sits there and they were like, well, I know that the developer did this, but realistically, a developer only has so much time to produce the game because they have to get something out. Right. Let me, let me put this in Navy terms because you have younger kids and Army and Air Force and three of us have the better intelligence agencies. But Navy. No. <laughs> But, so your kids play Minecraft, right? Yes. Okay, how often have you been annoyed watching them where they have wood here, wood here, wood here in a chest? Yes. How easy would it be if you had a button up here on the top where you could just click it and it sorts all the wood together and then all the other stuff? Absolutely. My kids wouldn't really... That's a modification. Yeah. Okay. It's not a cheat. So that's it's like... Ease of life. Yeah, players would develop that and put that button on... Like, when you open a chest, that button's there. Yep. So they're, like, creating that. Or, like, for Skyrim, there's mods where enemies become Timmy the Train. Gotcha. Yeah, some, some of it's jokes. Yeah. Some of it's pornography. Timmy. Some of it's legitimately upgrading the quality of the graphics. Yeah. Like, like significantly. For <laughs> Minecraft, there's 
4K texture packs yep. where everything's like realistic. There's what? mods where yep. like if you dump a water, it actually looks like water pouring down. Not blocks. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> and for Skyrim is like, well, they only have man armor. This is the biggest thing forever. Well, they only have man armor. Or all the women armor is only just bras and thongs and mm -hmm. panties. Now they actually have women armor. That actually complements the woman rather than just looking like normal medieval armor. Yeah. yeah. So it's Which to be fair, realistically is dumb. Well, I mean, yeah, because yeah. a woman's armor would not be that different from a man's armor. Not Correct. back then, not historically. Well, even not, not historically, now. Historically, if we still exists. had a need for armor of that type, like... Joan of Arc, perfect example. Joan of Arc did not have crazy fucking armor. She had very similar armor to most of the men she had. Yeah. She it did have... not accentuate anything. No, it didn't. Like it does in the movies. It does in well, the movies because it, it sells. Well, because I mean, also it actually then, adds armor penetrate. <laughs> you didn't want... Back then, also, they needed to, like, hide who they actually were. Well, yeah, that's very true. In every country, at that point in time, be it Japan or China or any country where someone... Like, the story of Mulan, well, actually, Mulan legitimately was a man the entire time. Yeah, it's because there like, was also a female with that three different times in their history. The Like, the funny part about it, too, is this. Mainly because men are expendable. Yes. Because they Stereo. don't produce. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. we we pretty much are. Yeah, we absolutely are. You know. Um, hey, Can I you, change this topic? You want to grab that hair dryer and... and yeah. Is that, is, I mean, it's a shrink wrap heater. About? Let's go. Yeah. All right, so I was reading in the news this week. Okay. About Apple. Oh, Apple. is this the whole watch bullshit? Yeah, Apple fucked my up. life. Because me and you talked about this yesterday. I'm gonna let you get into this, and you're gonna have to turn on higher, bro. It's on high, bro. That's on high. No, that's more than enough. Okay. You so, just need that airflow. But me and my wife talked about this, and she was like, "You know what? Screw it. Fuck it. You guys talk about this on the podcast. I want to research this, bro." She went on a fucking hour and a half search across to everything, and I was like. Okay, props, you know it. Now go ahead. So, Apple, I, I, I bought my wife the Apple Ultra 2 watch for Christmas. Because year after year, I've always gotten new Apple watches, right? And, uh, and I've asked her, hey, do you want one? Do you want one? Do you want one? No, 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 no. Well, I got the Ultra 1, and she's like, well, that's pretty. I want one. Then the Ultra 2 comes out, and she's like, I want the, the 2. I want the bigger batter. And I was like, it's the same damn watch. It's basically the exact same as the one. The frame's made of a different material. The processor's a little faster, but it's the same freaking watch. There's one difference, though. There's a single difference. What's the difference? It tracks one thing differently. Okay. Oh, the cycles. Yes. So it does do that better. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> But the key is, you had to buy it before December or the early part of December because now Apple cannot sell the watch. Yeah. They can now. They can now. They can now as of like two days ago. Okay. Because, so, the person that came out with this breathe technology that everybody's arguing about was originally for Samsung. Right. Which is what is used across hospitals around the world. It's yeah. your finger reader. Yeah. That's what's used around the world. Then he now moved to Apple, where he started working for Apple. Used the base programming, which is, Zach, you made this program, and then you made it better at this next place. Apple is the next place he moved at. And then he moved on to a different company after, where he's currently at. So he's moved to three different companies now. And what's being argued is, was it proprietary... It's, it's, it's it goes the, into it's like the knowledge, it's intellectual, intellectual property, intellectual, intellectual property. property. Yeah. yeah. And but if you look at the contract that he's yeah, signed, you don't, don't actually like if you work for another company, nine times out of ten, anything put, that you do for that company the is their intellectual property. And that's that's it's the fun. difference with this contract. Sure. Yeah. Each contract he signed, he owned it. 
Oh, shit. He made sure he was like, look, Zach, you made this great big program. This is yours here at Samsung. Then he, then he moved to Apple. You make the same program, but better, because you owned it here, you brought it over, you made it better, but you still own it. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> I thought that I thought that that code was open source. The Apple one wasn't. Samsung was. Yeah, the Samsung, but open source implies that they can take that and make it paid for. And if people are going well, to pay for it, they can. You can upgrade it and make <clears throat> it paid for. Yes. Yeah. And that's that's where Apple was. That's the funny thing is I'm sitting out there. I'm not cold at all when I'm standing out there. Yeah. Fucking the <laughs> adrenaline starting to rush, and I'm like getting ready. But yeah, the moment that it's like I'm setting up cameras and shit is like, yeah. oh, I'm freezing my I'm, ass I'm off. Cold. <laughs> I'm cold. I'm cold. You want to pass me that tobacco pouch? Yeah, sure. Mike. Your mic. Your mic's like super far away. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it, it was probably still picking you up. Especially no, if you got an was. omnidirectional. You're going you're gonna to be a little sounding distant. But I don't know. Considering how loud I normally am. <laughs> Um, what was I saying? Yeah, you said Mike, and I was like, yeah, my name. Yes. Yeah, my name. <laughs> Mike. Mike, you're Mike. You Fix your Mike, Mike. I know, I know Kelt was saying something you wanted to talk about. You wanted to reattach Wait, I, I wanted to finish this topic before we move on to the reattach. About the shady bro? About the shady bro, because it's, this is the country, and... What the fuck are you doing in front of my house? It is... Sitting. Thank you. Not in front of the driveway. I understand the whole in-between driveways. You know what? I'd respect that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But in front of my driveway, driveway, gravel road, <laughs> fuck it. And you sit in front of this? Bro, we're about to throw fucking fisty cuffs. That's where he fucked up. And I'm paranoid, right? Like, like there's a bunch of paranoid motherfuckers out here already. Yep. Um, in the country and here on this property. Well, there's a difference in the country. Parking in front of my house is like a mile away. Parking in front of my driveway is a different beast altogether. Absolutely. Like, I know you can attest that. There's, yeah. there's a whole different thing. <laughs> you can park in between driveways. Kosher, we're all good. You park in front of my driveway, we better have words, boy. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, there's a bunch of fucking meth heads out here. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. fucking know. I have no idea. Anyways, I'm done with that one. I, oh, no. I just needed to was, finish that one off. I was with you. I mean, that's like, a good segue into abortion. <laughs> 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 you full charge. Let me get a better angle. Full fucking charge into his house. Full on just fucking walking. And I'm just like, well, he's walking to his house. I'm going to go confront this bad boy. <laughs> Mike comes out with his uh, hefty, uh, you know, Country protection device. <laughs> and we're all just standing here. And in my peripheral, I see him with it. And I was just like, we're good. And Zach's there. Kelt's there. It's like, we golden. And he's he's scrolling through his phone. His wife has, or girlfriend, whatever it was, has since left wherever they are doing. Was she in the driver's seat? No. No, no. she was in the passenger. passenger. But she left the... She left the door open. Oh, so it was a dispute. It was oh, a yeah. Dispute. Yeah, absolutely. She, fuck she was just yeah. like... And he was like... I'm not going to hate you. I'm just going to walk away. So my assumption is she's walking back to their house, and he went off to, realistically, probably a bar or a friend's house. Yeah, the, probably the bar right across the street. Jake, yep. Jake's, Jake's place, I yep. think. Yeah, I've been, I've been there. It's cool. And I like that like, place. All right, this is what we're doing. Fuck it. I haven't been to jail all year. Let's go. <laughs> you would not go to jail. <laughs> so speaking of methods. Ooh, methods. Ooh, let's methods. Abortion. Let's go. <laughs> Abortion and methods. They go hand in hand. They should, right? I should mean, they? If you abort more kids, there will be less methods. <laughs> <laughs> I don't so, know if that's how it works. <laughs> so, Kelt <laughs> said to me, he said, I want to abort all the children. Sounds on par for Yeah, that sounds on par. Huh. What? That is not <laughs> what I said. Let's go. Let's rewind. <laughs> so um, I, I I was listening to or reading some statistic, and, like, I couldn't even, like, quote where I saw this from. This is just that random shit that floats around in the back of your head, but it essentially I said... Dude just drove back. He oh, was it that same guy? Same guy. Same oh, nice. Back. That's why they were hauling ass. Yep. 
Hopefully we don't hear shots later. Anyways, so what? apparently what? if the average person is not having 2.5 children, your population is in a decline. decline. Yep. yep. And so China is in a decline. Yep. They're actually in a negative. They're in a deficit. Well, yeah. They stopped they stop that whole, you have to kill the girl. Well, that wasn't, wasn't intentional. It wasn't even that. What has changed it was 2010, they're like, well, women can go back to work. And that what that is what ultimately changed a lot of it. Because now all these women are working. And they're not having kids all the time. Well, not not just that, though, is because they're going through the same thing we're kind of going through, but we're down to invite more immigrant, legitimate immigrants in. Yeah. Like, like not illegals. I don't support illegals, but legitimate immigrants. Um, because we're still a country that supports legitimate immigration. On a, safety. Yeah, we're still a, a, a melting pot, right? Um but they're still on the same struggle bus because they don't have enough blue collar workers mm -hmm. because they were pushing their, their party was pushing for so long to get all these people into the service industry, but their service industry isn't big enough to support the, the amount of people who are trained for, for Which that. Why you have the Car Korea's India, Taiwan, you have all their migrant workers yeah. up here that have just decided not to come back. Yeah. And that's why they're experiencing this deficit of blue collar. Well, India and China have been going at it even harder. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, like, even North Korea is kind of, like, at loggerheads with China. North Korea is just like, just let us drive your train, our train through you, and that's it. Like, they really don't want anything to do with China. Mm -mm. But then again, I mean... North Korea's, you know. The entire world is kind of a powder keg right now. So it really is, though. <laughs> and I was having this conversation. I actually had a guy delivering wood. He delivered a, 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 a quart of wood to me. And then some. And then some, because that's what you do in the country. Yep. Thank you, brother. And and I paid for him to... I paid the extra fee for him to, to stack the wood. But I can't be that person. Like, my parents and my grandma would never have accepted it so i was out there stacking wood with yeah, them with them, yeah. yeah but um just what you do the entire time i'm like talking to i'm i'm talking to him because like i am i try and keep myself informed more on the international as opposed to the national level and the entire time i'm talking to him about all the hot spots in the international world and oh, how yeah, what's going on like me and him were talking it was like oh Russia this is like I'm not the least concerned about Russia right now. Not really. Like, they they proved we don't need to be concerned about them, right? <laughs> like, yeah. And, and me and him talked about it. It's like, Russia's... You can't even hold against Ukraine right now. You think I'm really worried about you? This is a complex problem. Definitely. And like with almost every problem, it requires a complex solution. Agreed. There is no... There is no band-aid that you can apply that's immediately going to solve all there's these no problems. Yeah, there's no simple solutions. There needs to be a series of complex over time because we didn't get here immediately, right? We didn't get here over the span of a year. We got here over a significant period of time. 187 yes. years. Because I actually did the math on this two or three podcasts ago. We didn't get to this adoption foster care issue until 187 years ago, then the numbers started increasing. 187 years ago, we started having this issue. So, it, it's crazy. That's where we're at. But I think this is where we're going to cut it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, everything else is offline. And we'll cut it offline and so, we'll continue the conversation. So, this has been name pending. This is name pending. Throw a comment down below. Uh, As Mike always says. Fuck that like button. So, I've been Mike Culberson. I'm Keeper, and we got two guests with us tonight. We got Zach. And we've got Kelt. Um, so thanks. Have a good night. It's been fun.